Welcome to my Stock Radar series where I focus on hot stocks that are hitting my radar. Last week we did a video on TTOO, and man has it shot up nicely since then. It went from $2.20 to in the 360s now. Just in a week. This week we focus on a stock that I have been interested in going public for a while now, 23andMe. They have finally revealed plans to go public via a special purpose acquisition company, also known as a SPAC, and that's named VG Acquisition, ticker VGAC. And this announcement was just this past Thursday, February 4th. Now, I had to do a video on this because I'm very interested in the future. And one of my biggest idols, Kathy Wood from ARK ETF. If you haven't heard of Kathy, I encourage you that you watch some of her videos, including the Big Ideas presentation for 2021 on YouTube. I'll put the link below. So every fund that they have is at least 50% up or higher in the last year. They are amazing at researching trends. And Kathy was very EV bullish last year. This year, she seems to think that the genomic space is time to shine. The overall costs of innovating in this space have come down dramatically, and technology has advanced so much that genomic stocks have seen some major runs recently. Look at Twist Bioscience, ticker TWST. It's up almost 1,200% since 2018. Or Fate, it's up almost 5,000% since 2017. Or Exact Science, up 2,200% in four years. Now, I have 62 genomic-based stocks that I have been researching and looking at the history. And if you look closely at the charts, regardless of the product or company, they all seem to shoot straight up in most recent months. Now, Kathy may be onto something. Now, as technology advances faster and costs keep coming down in this space, allowing for faster innovation and faster potential profits. Okay, so what is 23andMe? It's a consumer genetics and research company that was founded in 2006. They do genetic testing on you to get you details about your health and wellness. They also make use of this information when developing treatments for genetic diseases. Now, once the merger happens, the ticker is gonna become ME, and their current value is around $3.5 billion. Now, this merger is going to provide 509 million in cash held by VG acquisition, 250 million from private investment and public equity, and Sir Richard Branson, the founder of VG acquisition, and also 23andMe CEO Ann are both going to add $25 million each, giving a company approximately $984 million in cash to fund its operations. This deal is estimated to close somewhere around Q2 of 2021. So 23andMe started with a $1,000 test that can alert customers of potential health risks that quickly ran into some regulatory issues and it was forced to be pulled from the market. They then pivoted to ancestry testing and then later relaunched a health test that gained FDA approval. So the once booming genetic testing business has since slowed and the early adapters have thinned out and customers are also concerned with privacy. So 23andMe has cut some jobs last year, but the company sees the customer count growing to 11.2 million in 2021 and reaching 16.4 million by 2024. So what value do I see in this? Well, one area of feature growth for 23andMe could be its drug development program. So they formed a partnership with GlaxoSmithKline, also known as ticker GSK, in 2018 for an exclusive four-year collaboration that will focus on research and development of innovation in new medicine and potential cures. And it's using genetics as a basis for discovery. So the collaboration will combine 23andMe's large-scale genetic resources, advanced data science skills, and the scientific and medical knowledge of the commercialization experience of GSK. And GSK is a science-led global healthcare company that innovates pharmaceuticals, vaccines, and customer healthcare products. They alone have 20 plus new product launches by 2026. And with over 10 potential peak annual revenues exceeding of $1 billion, they also have oncology momentum with 15 potential medicines in trial and 20 plus deals already being executed, including acquisitions of new antibody MNRA and genetic technology. Oh, and GSK made a $300 million investment in 23andMe and will share 50-50 of the costs and profits for drugs in the pipeline. 23andMe has over 30 therapeutic programs in the pipeline targeting areas like oncology, respiratory, cardiovascular, and more. So drugs take a very long time to create and for the approval, and they believe its database and research can solve this problem much faster. Its CD96 is in phase one trial, and the company thinks that it can cut to the market in four years compared to the seven years it normally takes. 23andMe also said in a presentation that the drug is twice as likely to be successful compared to the 90% of trial drugs that fail. A new area of growth for them is their 23andMe Plus subscription service that launched in October of last year and has had over 75,000 subscribers since this January. Now this provides a yearly subscription revenue stream of 29 bucks per customer. It's also part of their introductory model right now. So a customer can go on their site and purchase an ancestry and trait service for 99 bucks. It gives you a deep dive into where you came from and discover your DNA as well as your timeline to trace back thousands of years. They can help build what makes you unique from the physical characteristics that you have to even why you like a certain food or certain things that you taste, which is kind of crazy. So for another 100 bucks, you can get additional genetic health risks, giving you the variants associated with your genetic health. Now, this doesn't detect if you have any health problems per 
se. This will just say if you have an increased risk of certain potential things that could happen to you in the future so you're better prepared. Next, it gives you a pharmacokinetics report that tells you your DNA variants that may influence your body's ability to process some medications slower or faster. This is so precise based on your age, weight, liver, and kidney functions and how your body is going to react. And lastly, the carrier status detects genetic variants that can cause inherited conditions. So this is important when having children. If you and your partner are both carriers, you may have a child with this condition. And 23andMe also recently started a COVID study. With preliminary evidence, the blood type that you have does play a role in the susceptibility that people with O blood type are between 9 to 18% more likely to get it than others tested positive for COVID-19. Now, this is a lot of information, but there's more. My personal opinion is that I think people are very worried with privacy these days with social media, artificial intelligence marketing, Alexa's all over the house listening, and Big Brother watching. So I think that's why many are skeptical about giving their data, especially to a DNA company. But me, I love it. Let me explain. I've got like eight Alexas all over the house. And when I need something, I just say, turn the lights on or give me this information. And she's always able to help me anywhere. Go ahead and watch me. I'm not doing anything illegal. And I don't care if Facebook knows what I like because I have the control of my own buying habits. And I do want the company to know my genetic makeup because I want to know if I'm more prone to have any heart condition or potentially something else. And then of course I can be better prepared for it. So if I have to take certain vitamins or eat certain foods that will help boost certain elements of my body that I'm lacking, I want to know about it. So anything helps just blindly hoping that everything's fine. So I just got an email from ARC yesterday mentioning that CRISPR and Vertex disclosing that they're working on a gene editing solution for type 1 diabetes. So this gene editing device would act as an artificial pancreas sensing insulin levels and producing glucose when necessary. This is just one example tapping into our genes to help fix things that we never thought possible before. Okay, so let's circle back to 23andMe and look at the financials. Their revenues don't look very appealing right now. They declined from 441 million in 2019 to 305 million in 2020. And the company is guiding for revenue to decline again to 218 million in 2021. And the following three years, they're projecting 256, 317, and 400 million. But most investors now are not factoring in a few things. One thing is that they have 10 plus million people's DNA data already in their system. And they're working on 30 plus profit sharing programs in the pipeline. You know that 50 cent penny stock that you're excited because they got FDA clearance and that price doubled? Well, they have 30 that they're working on. And with them being a genetic data company, they have some huge potential long term. So as the price hovers right now in the teens, and it may for a short term because this merger isn't happening until Q2, I think there's some major upside potential here in the near future. And me personally, I'm on board for a long position rather than a short day trade or swing trade. Okay, let's finish by saying this video is of course for entertainment purposes only and please do your own due diligence before you make any kind of purchases. And if you haven't yet opened a Robinhood or Webull account, there are links below in the description for you to do so for free. If you open a Webull account, throw 100 bucks in it, we both get two free stocks. I hope you guys found some value in this video. Please like it for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing to this channel. I will be doing two videos every single week at minimum.